Hi everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome to Plane Time, Ardu Pilot Scripted Plane Following Edition. You might have seen my previous video where I had a drone following a plane. But Nick from the Baron Flights keeps bugging me about this. He wants to see a plane following a plane. Now in Ardu Pilot, there is no plane follow mode. There is a copter follow mode, but there's no plane follow mode out of the box. There is an example Lua script. There is a plane guided follow example, and I'll provide the link in the description for setting up plane follow mode on a high end flight controller in H7 with Ardu Pilot. And it's a little simplistic, but it does work. It does have some key challenges. It's just things that haven't been built in yet. There, it's a simple example designed to be the framework for adding more features. The, the problem this uh, scripting example has is, number one, the first plane is flying faster than the second plane. Then the first plane is just going to keep going further and further and further ahead and the second plane will never catch up. If the first plane is flying slowly and the second plane is flying faster, the second plane will actually catch up, go ahead of the first plane, and then circle around when it realizes that it's ahead and try to follow it again. And then it will go around and get ahead and then circle around and it will do this kind of looping behavior because it never matches the speed. The third example would be if the two planes start, follow, and they're like 100 meters apart, they'll keep flying at the same speed and the second plane will never catch up to the first plane. Uh, there's also no kind of object avoidance. Now you can, you can set the offset parameters to, to avoid objects. You have to configure it yourself. But if the second plane catches up to the first plane and they are on the same track, it, it's, it, it is possible that the second plane might hit the first plane. There's no collision avoidance. So I've taken that example and I've added some additional code and written that into a, a PR in Ardu Pilot. And it's only a draft PR. I'm linking the description. You can have a look. But it's just an, it's an example of how you might ch um, solve these problems. There's other solutions. So here's how it works. So if I run this script here called dualplane.sh that starts up two separate Ardu Pilot instances running two planes and I've called the planes number 11 and number 12. So what I'm going to do is mode auto. And arm throttle. Now this is vehicle 11. So I'm starting the first plane doing an auto mission and all I want to do is get the second plane, which you notice is still sitting on the runway there, and that's going to follow the first one. So what we're going to do, we're going to switch to the second plane. And first we'll just take it off. Right. So now we have the second plane taking off and doing more or less the same mission. But I have set up on a switch. So on my RC7, my channel 7 on my radio, I have a simulated switch. And if I ch let's just scroll that out. You notice that it's not really following the plane. It's following a path. RC7 2000. So now the plane swings around and starts tracking the other plane directly. And... The speed of this plane is doing 23 meters per second. And the other plane, plane 11, is flying about 20 meters per second. So what I've done already is uh, done speed matching. The second plane, this solves a couple of those speed problems. The first, the, the second plane, plane 12, was too slow. And so it speeds up until it gets close to the first plane. And once it gets close enough, then it starts slowing down. As you notice, it's getting closer and closer. Now its airspeed is dropped to 22 meters per second. 
and it's following along behind the other plane. So it's not going to hit the other plane because it's uh, never going to go fast enough to actually catch up. But, and it's, you notice that it's also, notice that it's tracking just slightly to the right and behind the first plane. Now that is because I'm using these follow parameters, which are the same follow parameters available for the copter. And so I'm saying that it's running 20 meters behind, 20 meters to the right, and 50 meters above the other plane. So notice that the above ground level altitude is 100 meters, although the first plane is flying at 50 meters. Let's speed up the first plane. We'll make it go 28 meters per second. So now, the airspeed of the second vehicle is 24 meters per second, 26 meters per second, 27 meters per second, 29, because it even has to go faster in order to try and catch up. But its airspeed max is 30 meters per second, so it'll never go faster than 30. So at 30 meters per second, the first plane is doing 28. It's gradually and slowly going to catch back up there and then uh, track that first plane trying to catch to that spot. Now let's slow it down again. So now it's slowed back down to about 20, so about 22, but it's got to go to a little bit faster so it can catch up. And once it catches up, once it catches up, it's going to settle in at 22 meters per second. So we've basically solved the three problems. We have, if the first plane goes too fast, the second plane will speed up. If the first plane goes too slow, the second plane will actually slow down, and we saw that. And if they're going the same speed, it should basically track right now to, uh, to that particular waypoint, which is just barely behind the, just a little bit behind the second plane. Now, it went a little bit to the right because it needed to uh, deal with the, the, the corner of the, the track that it was following, and so it, sort of dodged a little bit to the left and the right so that it would do the object avoidance. It would never hit that plane. The same thing's going to happen here. It's going to basically do a little bit of a wide circle coming around. It's not going to hit that other plane. And now it's going to come back in and track just to the right of the plane. Now I could change that. If I do And I'll do minus 20, so I switch it to the other side. Notice that the, the little target point moved now to the other side of the plane. Now it will track on the left side of the plane based on that offset. And it'll do a wider circle going around. So it'll actually have to speed up a little bit as it goes around to keep up. And the speed should kick up to 23 meters per second. And now it's tracking that other plane as you can see. So altogether, I'm actually pretty happy with this. I mean, it's not going to do formation in the sense of, you know, tracking a couple of meters beside the wing of the other plane, but um, it will happily fly, you know, 10 to 20 meters behind and, and to the left or right of the lead vehicle. And uh, maintain speed and match speed with the other vehicle as it flies around the track. So to me, this seems like quite reasonable from the point of view of a SIDL test, a simulation. So as you can see, it does work in the simulator, in SIDL. Um, I'm not totally happy with it. it. It works. It's okay. But I think I can already think of uh, some ways to improve how it works, but this is version one. So version one works in the simulator, actually works pretty well. I think it's good enough to try on some real planes, probably a couple of foam, foamies that uh, um, are low risk if something goes wrong.
but I plan to put these this plane follow mode onto a couple of my planes, probably the Glass Star and the White Shark, and take it out to the field. And stay tuned, there'll be a video where I can show you that, and potentially another video where I do a version two of this script. Tim the Plane Man, over and out. Thank you.